Hi you, um, someone woke up from their nap early so is now going to be in the video where we talk about colic. So you best behave because your mom's trying to tell everyone that we sorted your colic problem. But anyway, okay, I'm going to start off and preface this by we had help and I needed help. There was two months where we we're getting no more than three hours of broken sleep a night. So you're talking like 40 minutes, crying, wake up, be up for maybe an hour. Like try and put him down with every single advice we'd ever gotten. Swaddling, pacifiers, rocking. Like we were like mad people and bouncing balls. He just woken up from a nap, I swear. That's the only reason why he's crying right now. Yes, we're fine, aren't we? Yes, we're so happy now. Um, so, oh, this is going to be a tricky video, isn't it? Basically, how I'm going to describe colic is that it is a symptom. So colic is not the, the actual issue. It's not the actual thing that is wrong. It's the symptom of something else that is wrong with your baby. So a colic is the crying. It's the screaming. It's the pain. It's, you know, the uncontrollable crying that you just don't know how to fix and and that's the issue i felt like i was going around in circles because i was being told how to soothe my baby not how to solve the underlying issue that was causing the colicky symptoms so the help that we got was of charmaine mead she has a book called seven to seven um, and it is not a sleep training book i was adamant and i refused to believe that we would have no sleep until our little one got to the age of four to six months where we were able to sleep train and essentially let him cry out. I was not having it. I was like, firstly, I was like, there's gotta be more things that we can do to help, firstly. Um, Cause you could tell if your baby has colicky symptoms, I'm sure you can tell that your baby is in pain, like there's something wrong. Um, and sleep training and just letting them cry till they get exhausted or letting them cry until they think no one's coming is, is just not, it just feels horrible. And I can't imagine ever being able to do that. You're probably already hungry, aren't you? Imagine waking up from a nap and going straight into YouTube filming. I know, it's a hard life, um, but I'll try and be quick. So in the book, Charmaine, and I will just link the book in the description because I've read every book. And some of the books have been amazing. Happiest Baby on the Block, um, love that book too. It taught us a lot of ways to soothe, but Charmaine taught us that colic does not exist. Colic is a symptom of an, something else. So what is the something else? Generally, it will be digestive and gut issues. Literally 90% of the time, she's been in the industry for 27 years. She's met a lot of babies. So I'm a first time mom. Many of you watching might be first time moms or you might be a mom that had a baby who just slept and never cried. And then your second one is nonstop crying and you don't know what to do. So she literally broke it down for me and she was like, I wanna know how this baby is sucking uh, on the breast or on the bottle. I want to know how much milk intake, when the milk take intake is, how, how long between the drinks of milk, the feeds, <laughs> how long are naps, how long are awake times, are the awake times structured, what's the bedtime routine, everything. Like detailed, I want to know everything that's happening. And what's interesting is I felt like we were, we were struggling and panicking so much, we weren't really looking into those details. We were just so focused on like the sleep and the lack of sleep that we didn't even realize that the fact that he was snacking on my breast, like literally only breastfeeding for five minutes, meant that his stomach was essentially getting full of gas bubbles and buildup, which was making him think, he, yes, which is making him think he was full when he was not full. Yes, yeah, so we might have to pause this video and I might have to come back. Okay, and we're back. Sam's baby. Um, so, where I was, I feel like it was actually really, really tricky to concentrate while I was like worried about him. So, let me try and make it clearer. So we know that colic, <laughs> colic is not, a thing it is a symptom of something that is wrong 
90% of babies, it's usually to do with their gut and their digestive system because their digestive systems are very immature and they're brand new into the world. Everything has changed. So let's talk and delve into that a little bit deeper. What is happening with your baby is not just their digestive system, but it's what's going into their digestive system. So my baby was screaming and bright red and had a bloated stomach for the first three weeks of his life because he had a cow's milk intolerance. I know why we didn't think of this sooner because his dad's lactose intolerant, but, and I wish that I'd had this information from the beginning so I could have tested out different food groups. And that's essentially what you have to do if you're breastfeeding. You're gonna have to test and see if those symptoms of colic are due to an intolerance or an allergy. And the main one that might be affected is cow's milk allergy. So, I cut dairy um, three weeks postpartum and as soon as I cut the dairy there gradually was a huge difference and it can take up to two weeks for the dairy to leave your system. What I'm, I just can't even explain to you, it was life-changing. Yes, he was still overtired crying but there was no colic to the point of screaming uncontrollably where we could not soothe him. His stomach was no longer bloated. He was no longer bright red and arching his back, which is just horrible to see your baby in that pain. He just wasn't fully calm or able to settle. Certainly couldn't put him to sleep without really investing a hard amount of time, like a good 30 minutes of on a bouncy ball, in the swaddle, shaking, pacifier in the mouth, like a whole ritual. And it just didn't make sense because when a baby is fed, they don't have gas and wind and they have played and you know have been awake long enough like Charmaine said they will want to sleep they'll be ready they'll be tired and they will just be able to be put down and this is what's really important the difference between sleep training and just helping your baby and figuring out what's going on and making sure they are happy and healthy and satisfied because they're gonna sleep anyway if that's the case so I really encourage you, I'm obviously gonna link Charmaine's book down in the description. I can't give away all of her trade secrets right now because she has a business to run. The book could be life-changing for you and it's just the cost of a book. So I would highly recommend it because for me, I've got the mom's on call schedule, I've got Happy's Baby on the block, I've got Solve Your Sleep Problems, I've got all of the classic books um, and none of them for me actually addressed, okay, my baby might have digestive stomach issues and how can we help that so the first thing I did was I stopped breastfeeding even though I'm and I'm still dairy free I stopped breastfeeding and I started expressing the reason that I started expressing was because I did not know how much milk my baby was getting and because his habit was a snacking type of feed which is a very short feed but a very very frequent feed which again, if they're doing that in the day, they're gonna want to do it at night. So that is why my baby was waking up every hour, yes, literally some nights, every hour, to snack and to feed for five minutes, then fall asleep again. Um, and again, we didn't know the difference between hunger cry and an overtired cry, etc., etc. But our baby, up until a few weeks ago, was only getting nine to 11 hours sleep max. 11 was really good. I would say on average, nine, maybe 10 hours. And newborns are meant to be getting 14 to 17. So our poor baby has been overtired, basically in his whole life, the last two months. And we've been overtired too. Um, and again, so the next steps I took to solve that, thanks to Charmaine's advice, was I started expressing so I could understand my milk supply. And so that I could understand how much milk he was taking and when and how. So now I know what my milk supply is doing and I realized that the reason he was snacking was A, because I was not burping him and winning him efficiently or effectively. I was doing it at the end of a feed, not throughout the feed. So not only was he not getting enough milk at feeds because he had gas bubbles in his stomach, which fooled him into thinking that his stomach was full so he would stop eating then realized after he farted or burped or those gas bubbles had done whatever they needed to do, I'm hungry again, let me snack again. 
vicious cycle. And again, training your baby to snack and not to eat these full meals. That also lends itself to your baby only getting the fore milk, not the hind milk. The fore milk is watery, it's sugary. It's gonna give your baby more gas. It's gonna give them green frothy stools too. We had that for about a week. And I was like, oh my goodness, now what's going on? We fixed the dairy thing, what's now wrong? So again, expressing made me see the different types of milk that I was pumping out. It made me realize that I have to pump for about 30 minutes to get a lot of really high quality, well-balanced milk. And if my baby's only feeding for five minutes, I know he's not getting the good stuff. So we had to change the pattern of which he was feeding. And we did that by expressing and bottle feeding. And it's hard. Instead of going from five minute feeding, we're trying to force, kind of force, I don't like that word, but really trying to implement that our baby fed instead of potentially two ounces. We're right now at eight ounces per feed with averaging five to six feeds a day. That's a lot of milk. We have a very hungry baby. Your baby might not need that much, but essentially it could take an hour and a half of just trying to bottle feed, take a break, burp every two to three minutes. Yes, and you're doing it for an hour and a half. It was very hard to transition to big solid feeds. Um, and now after two weeks of going from it taking an hour and a half to do not even eight ounces, honestly, the most we could get them to do was like five, six. Now we can do eight ounces in 30 to 40 minutes. It's a game changer. So it basically means that now our baby is efficiently burped and winded so there's no gas bubbles, so he can drink more in his feeds, so he's not hungry, he's not snacking. We're now down to one feed in the night. Bear in mind, I only met Charmaine and started working with her a week and a half ago. So in a week and a half, we've gone from waking up every couple of hours and snacking throughout the night to waking up once a night and putting him to bed at 7.30 and him waking up at 7.30 a.m. So we're nearly there. So back to the colic. Your baby needs to be winded and burped. You need to see if they're satisfied. Are they eating enough for every feed? How many feeds are you doing a day? How much breast milk have you got? Uh, what's your supply like? Have you got a fast letdown? Which means that your baby might be choking or your baby might be swallowing and gulping more air in, which is gonna give them more wind. It's honestly, there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack here. Um, and I really hope that these tips have been helpful. Um, so what I hope that you will try is instead of you know, letting your baby cry out or putting a pacifier in their mouth. We've gotten rid of all the pacifiers and I'm telling you, I had about 30. I should, I'll take a picture. I tried every single one to see which one our baby would take. And we were just trying to like shove it in sometimes because there was so much crying and that is not the answer. We don't use a pacifier now and let, and because there's an actual reason why your baby's crying. For example, he just woke up from that nap and he's hungry, you know? so. I know that that's why he's crying. I'm not gonna put a pacifier in his mouth to stop that. So um, I think that that's really, really important. I want you to watch this video. I want you to know that there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And all of these digestive issues are going to get better because your baby's body is growing and evolving all the time. They are magical little beings and they're getting used to this world. So it's only gonna get easier. It's crazy because one of our friends has such a sweet little boy is only 10 days behind our baby and he self burps so every time he would come off the breast and bearing in mind he would feed for 40 minutes while my baby would feed for five so I didn't know that there was something wrong with that he would burp just automatically whereas our little baby wasn't but we did this I do the seated winding position for me that's the most effective making sure their back straight heads up not curled down or else you might get spit up cupping your hand against the back so you're not slapping the spine and just working those gas bubbles out and upwards, massaging their back upwards in between. Again, Charmaine taught me all of the best winding positions and then again across the shoulder and burping up and down. So let's start there. If your baby has these colicky symptoms, 
winding and burping every couple of minutes, making sure that your baby is drinking enough milk. Um, I, you're gonna have to have a look and find out either you can get a consultation with Charmaine who will tell you exactly what your baby should be drinking for their weight and height and age, or you know, go and get some expert advice. I have a two and a half month old that's about 24 inches long and at least 12 and a half pounds now, maybe more, maybe more like 13, and he is drinking 38 ounces of milk in a 24 hour period. Crazy, I know it's a lot of milk. So, <laughs> the colicky symptoms will go away. Just really take note, it could also be something you're eating. There are so many things, onions can cause gas, the cabbage family can cause gas, so cabbage, Brussels sprouts, then there's the broccoli and the cauliflower, then there's the beans. There is a lot of things that you might be in your diet, even garlic can put your baby off of your breast milk. So really delve in and know that the colic, they're not just crying for no reason. They need your help and you can do it. Don't feel like it, you're helpless, you can get better. First off, if you're breastfeeding, start with your diet. Like I said, the cutting the dairy stopped those crazy colicky symptoms for us. And then we did still have crying and unsettlement, and that was solved by increased milk supply of good quality mixed milk of hind milk and fore milk, um, burping, and then also structured awake time, making sure that your baby is awake for at least two hours so that then they're ready, they're full, and they're tired, and they're ready for a good nap of around 45, which is their normal sleep cycle, to two hours in the day. Not more than two hours though, because they might get confused with the night and day. I feel like I've talked a lot in this video. Please put in the comments any more questions that you have, but reminder, colic does not exist, it's not a thing. Your baby has something going on and the symptom is colicky. Um, if you feel really lost, you can get a copy of Charmaine's book. It's in the description. You're doing amazing. I cried my eyes out. Um, I felt bad, but I had to take myself into our bathroom sometimes and just sit on the toilet and just, I know, zone out. Um, it's really, really tough to see your baby in pain and see them crying, um, but there is things you can do. So start with your diet if you're breastfeeding or if you're on formula, make sure it's a formula that is for sensitive stomachs for fussiness and gas. Similac was not good for us. It made him literally projectile vomit. We have tried Enfamel, am I saying that right? Enfamel, yeah, I'll take another photo to show you. Then that one has worked perfectly for us. And I just have that ready to go in case something happens with my milk supply. I've been pumping so much that touch wood, it's really good now. I'm producing, shh, don't wanna swear, a lot of milk. Uh, and I'll do that other video for you all because that's really, really important. Um, and yeah, just, just, ask for help it's gonna be okay you're doing amazing and I, all those people that are like oh I feel so bad for you or have you got a good baby that sleeps through the night your baby is good your baby is perfect your baby is doing the best that they can and you are doing the best that you can and I'm here cheering you on please put any more questions down in the description I hope this has helped um, and implement these things immediately you can do it try and implement a schedule especially a bedtime ritual that's going to help ease them and know them it's bedtime and good luck you've got this i love you bye